Gomez, thank you very much for joining us today. We're very pleased to have you here. Hi, thank you. Um, in next generation medicine, uh, technology, apps, wearables, artificial intelligence is becoming increasingly important. And so uh, today I would like to talk a little bit about apps in particular, where you have plenty of expertise. Just earlier on, I was talking to, to a very good colleague of mine, friend and colleague, about Alzheimer, mm -hmm. Alzheimer disease, about lifestyle, how lifestyle plays into prevention or secondary pre prevention uh, or um, an increase in quality of life in Alzheimer patients. Mm -hmm. You have an app, a very interesting app um, in this field. Can you tell me a little bit about it? Yeah, thanks for the opportunity, Anna. So I'm the Chief Science Officer of Altoida and also an Atlantic Fellow in uh, Brain Health Equity. And we have developed a medical device that can be used for very early screening at the uh, pre-symptomatic cohort and uh, classify individuals that could be benefit from uh, lifestyle interventions, basically. So this app is going to be FDA cleared probably this month. We are waiting okay. for a response from the FDA. It's being endorsed by the Alzheimer's Association US uh, this is going to be published as well by New Year at the Alzheimer's and Dementia Journal. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's going to be public sometime by next year, mostly at the US first and then in Europe. And what kind of lifestyle modifications are we talking about? Because Lawrence uh, gave an incredible talk uh, the other week about uh, nutrition, about particularly also protein and the impact of calories in form of proteins on on the development of Alzheimer and differentiated between different age categories. Mm -hmm. What kind of lifestyle changes or modulations uh, are you talking about? Yeah, so we believe more in a multifaceted approach. So that would mean uh, many uh, different uh, interventions and many different approaches going personalizing, uh, personalizing the same individual. So we know today that there might be nine modifiable risk factors uh, that have more to do with uh, vascular uh, uh, modification or regulation, they have to do with exercise, they have to do with neuroplasticity, but it's never going to be just one thing. So you would need to have a, a combination of different intervention coming into play. Mm -hmm. And of course you need tools like ours, like Altoida, to be able to create specific phenotypes so that they create this personalized approach. And uh, our, our uh, mission and our vision is to basically uh, provide a companion diagnostic tool or companion diagnostic solution that will be uh, used to assess you maybe weekly or monthly and based on that you get a score and basically then you ha it's in your own hands and in your own control to improve the score. So in a way you can continue uh, living your lifestyle as you wanted or you might use the score that we are providing as a feedback that you might want to change something. And this change might be better exercise or bigger duration of exercising or bigger, bigger sorry, intensity of physical exercising. Uh, nutrition also plays a role, so I would uh, agree to what uh, Lauren said uh, earlier. But um, nothing individually really helps. I mean, it should be a combination. Of course. And basically, yeah, the more data points and the more uh, values you translate from an everyday phenotype, like what we can do with, with our novel biomarker, the more insights you get as to what really matters more. Mm -hmm. I, I have a few questions uh, in regards yeah. to the app, but uh, for the patient, for the normal patient, mm -hmm. uh, he might not know what a phenotype is. What mm -hmm. do you mean by phenotype? Yeah, so phenotype is basically the overall description of someone's everyday function in, in mm -hmm. plain words. Mm -hmm. And of course, we don't uh, provide this description to the patient himself. I mean, he might see something simple like a brain age mm -hmm. or a brain function, so that to make it even uh, more easy for him to understand and to monitor. So essentially, it's, it, it should be like a game. Basically, you have a, a score and your goal is to increase the score. As, as simple as that. Just like what you do for your physical age, that uh, sometimes your uh, bodily age, let's call it like that, it's different than your biological age and you need to, to make the match. Same can happen with the brain. So the brain is an instrument as well. It might have its own uh, health, the brain health, its own brain health. And you need to match the two, or you might even want to improve your brain health compared to your biological brain health. 
So that's what we can provide with such an app. And, you know, the, the whole idea is to basically adhere as much cognitive and behavioral interventions as, as possible. Mm -hmm. And adherence, as we all know, yeah, is know. very much uh, increased when something's fun, when <laughs> something's... So I think that's a brilliant idea to yeah. describe it and, and uh, design this app uh, to be kind of a game. Mm -hmm. I think that will uh, will uh, definitely have a, an impact on the outcome. Mm -hmm. Where does the data go? Can the patient himself decide where it's going? Yeah, we believe that the patient should be the owner of the data. So basically, uh, this is his data. He's providing this asset to us. Uh, we're the ones analyzing this asset and provide him with insights. Uh, at the end of the day, I mean, he will still be the owner unless he decides that, you know, he wants to share uh, this data with us for research options. Right. Because we're in the AD moonshot right now. We want to get as much insight as possible to, to be able to solve potentially AD at some stage. Mm -hmm. So if he agrees that he could share this data for research purposes, that's fine with us. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, primarily he is going to be the owner of the data. I think that's brilliant because data protection, as yeah, we yeah. know, is, is yeah. crucial, it's very important. And also just to add to that, I mean, on the data democratization perspective, I mean, this really brings a totally different perspective in the idea of how much value you have as a patient. Because uh, if you are underprivileged, I mean, I, I, mean, I, mean, I am sorry, this Atlantic fellow in, mm -hmm. in brain equity, if you are underprivileged, you don't necessarily have access to, to primary or secondary healthcare. Mm -hmm. Uh, on the other hand, if you have a way to create value with your own data, then you immediately could get access because you have something valuable that people oh, want. Of course. And then you become less underprivileged in the whole process. Right. This is very much in line with uh, Professor Ernst Hoffman and his My Data initiative, which I also very mm. much, very much support and like. Uh, I think the ownership of the data is yeah. extremely important also for an app like that. But you were talking about the research and, and about the data also being able to find research. Yeah. That is also highly interesting. Sure. So yeah, I mean, essentially Altoid is a data platform. I mean, right now we have a medical device that is going to be commercialized quite soon, as I said. Mm -hmm. But essentially this is not our only product. I mean, our product uh, or, or service, if you like, is being a data platform. I mean, we do have a collaboration that is ongoing with Novartis. We do have a collaboration with uh, different players in, in Asia and US. And uh, the idea is to become a, a mainstream endpoint for uh, early presymptomatic patients, as well as different stages of AD, where you might want to modify your, your, the course of the disease, basically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, as a data platform, then all these research goals become enabled. Because, uh, I mean, it's all about the data at the end. That's why I, I don't necessarily approve ideas such as big data, that mm -hmm. you get uh, AI controlling and trying to analyze any sets of data. I mean, this for me is not the way. Yes. You need to have intelligent and smart sources of data that actually make sense. Right. You don't just put garbage in because you're going to get garbage out. Yes. So essentially, I mean, the idea with Altoida is uh, we let you operate like you do normally in everyday life who assess you at the so-called complex activities of daily living. And based on those activities of daily living, we get an estimate of how your everyday function is changing. And this is what is not being done today. I mean, you spoke with Lauren before, and we have a pretty good idea of what's happening inside your brain, or maybe inside your circulation. Mm -hmm. We don't necessarily know how this translates in everyday life. Are you becoming a better driver? Yes. Are you becoming uh, better at finding your keys at the house? Yes. Are you becoming a better cooker or a worse cooker? So those are all exercises that we can play with, with our app and we can get real life uh, complex activities of everyday living data that essentially uh, all will benefit from. I mean, being a researcher will benefit, being a patient will benefit, and also the healthcare system will benefit uh, through this concept of real world evidence. So our uh, very good colleague, uh, Effie Vallena, she of course is one of the uh, spearheads of uh, citizen science here mm -hmm. in, in Zurich and the initiative of citizen science and um, they're also really looking into how to feed mm -hmm. patient uh, reported outcomes uh, into uh, mm -hmm. research mm -hmm. uh, and science and I think this is uh, of course with mm -hmm. apps like that this is a brilliant tool to, mm -hmm. to enable that. To really I think support. there is a platform if I'm not mistaken there is a platform that is being developed by the ETA Zurich uh, and the uh, University of Zurich as well. It's, I think it's called the Renga platform. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, they did it for this purpose specifically. So they are into open and uh, sellable data. Yes. We want to work with them and we, we are working with them because I'm part of ETH and we are a spin-off from the ETH. Right. So I think they are quite strong here in, in Zurich, in yes. Switzerland, and they yes. want to take the lead yes. in this matter. So yeah, and I didn't speak too much about Neurolands, but Neurolands comes from the other side of the equation, mm -hmm. which is once you get the data, what are you doing with them? So Good this point. will be the intervention part. Right. And the Neurolands is actually creating a personalized intervention that happens first half in the clinic. So that will be an intensive eight to 12 weeks to basically uh, carry out and uh, repeat the existing protocols for prevention, like the finger study. Mm -hmm. And after that, you enter the monitoring phase. So that would be again with some wearables and some devices or some apps like ours, that you get constant monitoring. And that way you can really get a feel of how your lifestyle is looking and how can you, what can you do to improve it, basically. So that would be Neuralance, because Neuralance in collaboration with Hirschladen or we want to be in collaboration with, with Hirs London. We want to introduce this new concept, work on prevention, mm -hmm. rather than trying to treat things when it's too late. Right. I, so. I agree. That's a very good, very good approach. So <laughs> it's a is new a, approach. <laughs> it's a very good approach. So Neuralance is that a foundation? or, or uh, Neuralance, it's a company to be established. Mm -hmm. Uh, we are currently looking for investment and, you know, I think this is something that the CEO of Neuralance can, can talk about. But uh, it looks like it might be uh, a collaboration with Hirschladen, at least at the beginning. And we want to see what happens next. Great. Well, I'm very excited to take a look at the app. As we discussed, yes. we, will, we, will, we will see how it works. Uh, so I'm excited. But thank you very much thank for you. this wonderful interview. Thank you. Thank, and thank you. you for your time. Thank you.